How's it going, everybody? Man, I feel like it's been a while since I've done a live stream from my garage. Um, but I, you know the drill. I need a, I need a sound check. Um, do, do I sound okay? Do I sound echoey? Because uh, I have been playing around with uh, the microphones uh, in here and playing around with the uh, streaming software uh, to make sure everything is staying nice and consistent um, and whatnot. And I don't know if y'all can tell, but I've moved my camera. Uh, to where now it's more um, on top of my spare monitor that I actually have sitting behind my laptop because it used to be more eye-leveled. Now you get to see more of me, especially when I actually um, talk and you actually can't see the microphone that covers up the majority of my face. Um, so I think this is good. Um, I'm getting all good on the sound check, so this is great. Welcome everybody to the stream. I am going to be attempting to play some straight pool. Um, I think it's been quite a while uh, since I did a straight pull live stream. Um, matter of fact, let me look. I know it's been quite some time since I did it. I think, I think the last time I did a straight pull live stream was, uh, when, um, when I was preparing for the Texas open. I think that was the last time. Yeah. When I had, or actually, yeah, it was before the Texas open. The last time I live streamed straight pull was, Wow, that was that was back in at the end of at the end of August. Now I, I've been I've been at least practicing it still. Um, I don't know if anybody has seen my um, latest post where um, or my, my latest video, one of my latest videos where I did score another seventy nine. Um, you know, it, it was it was a run where I could have beaten my seventy nine, but if you saw basically how it ended, I was trying to break up one more cluster. Um, to be able to get into the next rack in lieu of that I might have been able to, you know, score 100. But when I broke up that 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 last cluster, I had a pretty uh, pretty bad leave. Fairly simple shot uh, up table and just ended up bobbling the pocket to, to tie the 79. If I would have just ignored that cluster and just made the balls that were still left on the table, I would have at least I would have at least broken my record um, at the very least. So it was good to it was good to see another 79. I've recorded a couple of 70s um, uh, in the past as well, so it was it was good to start seeing some high numbers like that. So that way, my current record of 79 doesn't feel like a fluke um, anymore. So yeah, I'm just hoping that I can possibly keep that up tonight um, and uh, you know score some you know score some good scores. You know at least uh, you know, it'd be nice to get to put up another 50 plus um, on a live stream. It'd be really nice to be able to break my record um, on a live stream. It'd be extremely nice to be able to maybe hit 100 um, on a live stream, but we'll see. Only the pool gods will tell. Uh, so let's see here. Why don't I have some stuff on the screen here? Oh, I need to, I need to make some updates uh, because uh, some announcements. Um, you can see that I, I just turned on the logos in the uh, upper left-hand corner there. And since I'm not in my office, I forgot the uh, town uh, logo because that needs to be up there as well. I need to move all that stuff um, in here uh, for the um, for streaming in my office. Uh, but, you know, I want to say thanks uh, to my sponsors, Onboard Sportswear and um, Town Billiards. Um if y'all don't know, Onboard Sportswear currently launched their U.S. site, so we now have a shop here in the in the United States. Uh, so shipping should be um, a whole lot less than, than coming from uh, coming from overseas. And last I knew, um, until the end of October, they are doing free shipping. So if you haven't done so already, go on and check out Onboard uh, Sportswear. Um, I think it's .us now. Uh, .com takes you to their original website, um, which is in um, overseas. Let me check I for you. Onboard Sportswear. Yeah, doing a search takes you to their .com. And if <laughs> they actually have it set to where they can probably detect if you're coming from the, the US and it'll actually pop you up with a redirect. And yes, it's onboard sportswear uh, .us. Um, and if you're interested in any of their apparels, especially for um, for any of their league or if you're in any leagues and you want to have team shirts or something like that, then, uh, yeah, you definitely might want to uh, be able to check out and see if you want to make, get a shirt made for your teams. Um, I do have an affiliate discount code with them. 
You can use Lil Chris 10 in all caps and get 10% off of your purchase. Now, as well as my sponsorship that I have with Town Billiards, that affiliate code that I have is going to end in six days, as far as I know, because when I was told that I have the affiliate code, it was only gonna last a month, and that is in six more days. So if you go to townbilliards.com and use the code Lil Chris in all caps, then you can also get 10% off of your purchase. And uh, holy cow, I did not know that this actually turned on. So I need to show this. Um, Elaine Richard from Facebook uh, sent me 50 stars. Thank you so much for that. I really do appreciate it. This is kind of like the YouTube equivalent of sending a super chat. Um, so that's really cool. I just recently turned that on and I actually didn't know that it was, or I should say I applied uh, for my Facebook page to have stars activated. And I, I don't think I never got a notification that it was turned on. And so apparently it is turned on. So Elaine Richard, thank you so much for that. I really do appreciate it. Okay. Um, I think that's really it. Um, yeah. So I think that's all the announcements that I have. Oh, no, I forgot. Um, because I do have some giveaways uh, going on. Um, if you check the pinned comment on both Facebook and on YouTube, um, I am currently giving away two JFlower Power Jump Cues. Um, I have a product review video uh, that I did on them. They're both uh, linked in the uh, pinned comment. And so if you watch that video and follow the instructions uh, that are at the end of the video to where I want you to be able to like the video, um, comment on the video, and then you have to be a subscriber to my YouTube channel as well as have your subscription list public. Uh, because in a few weeks time now, because the video is getting older as, as, I, um, as days go by, um, in a few more weeks, I'm going to randomly select two comments uh, from that video. And as long as I verify that whoever wrote those comments are subscribers, then they will win uh, their very own uh, Power Jump Cube. And then if you look at my Facebook page, uh, Lil Chris Pool Player, I currently have a small giveaway where I'm giving away three packages of town products. Um, they include a Town V10 uh, chalk, um, a leather pouch, um, your choice of a left, it's, it's only a left-handed glove. I don't, I don't have any right-handed gloves, uh, but you can have medium, large, or extra large, because that's what I have. Um, and then your choice of either a Fusion tip or a Town Pro medium tip. I think each, each package is valued well over uh, close to $100, and I'm giving away three of those. That one's a little different, though, because that one is strictly done on Facebook. So you have to go over to my Facebook page, find the post, and then follow the directions uh, that are on the post. And when I go live to announce those winners, I'm just gonna strictly do that on Facebook. It won't be a dual stream like this is where I streamed both Facebook and YouTube. So yeah, that should be all of my announcements. Okay. So I think without further ado, I wanna go ahead and get started. So let's do this. Let's switch over to this. Oh, there's my scoreboard. Let's turn that off. There we go. I think everything else looks correct. So yeah, let's get started. Not really, don't think I'm really gonna do a whole lot of talking uh, while I'm out here, except for just general uh, banter and whatnot. I wanna uh, focus on trying to put on a, uh, or uh, getting a good score. Oh, before I forget, like, how do I sound out here? I know out here I should sound echoey, uh, but can y'all, can y'all, can y'all hear me legibly when I'm out there? Like, I should sound fine when I'm facing this microphone that I have here, but when I'm out and about on the table talking like, talking like this, I should sound a little echoey, but hopefully you should be able to hear me just fine. You just get a couple of thumbs up or, or anything. And speaking of which, you know, if you haven't done if you haven't done so already, before I forget, because I can do this, if you haven't done so already, please give this stream a thumbs up, especially if you're on Facebook or YouTube. And if you're on Facebook, then please share the stream uh, to your Facebook profiles and any of your favorite uh, pool groups as well. I would really appreciate that. Apart from the echo is all good, sounds good. Okay, I can still, ch you know, as I continuously try to work on the audio here, hopefully it'll, get, it'll continue to get better um, over time. Ugh, wow, I, 
didn't realize I had a triple combo lined up. Trying to decide if I want to break the break that cluster up or just go ahead and play the combo to have with it. I think I'll be fine. I'm gonna call the twelve ball. out of options. Here I might be able to push the nine ball into break ball position, but then I'm also cutting off that pocket from, from these balls. 15 ball would be a backup shot. Well, 15 ball would be a backup shot if I move to cue ball enough. So here you see what I mean by moving the nine ball into break ball position. Now I've just got a really severe cut shot on the 15 ball, which means I can lose my break ball if I'm not careful. Um, this is going to get tricky. I don't know if I'm going to, if I should play ball ball fouls or just cue ball fouls only. This is getting too close for comfort. That would have been nice if I would have ran if I would have ran into those two. So now I gotta take my break ball. Ah, uh, what does this mean? I mean, I can I can try to play the combo, but I'm not guaranteed anything. Yeah.
even even as such, like, what am I what am I gonna do? But hey, first attempt, we get out of the first rack. I think that's a good start. I don't know if anybody saw, but it looks like um, Jason Shaw is getting ready to make another attempt at straight pool here soon. It's actually pretty exciting. That was a terrible break. Probably not even going to count this. I don't have a, I don't have a shot. I legit don't even have a shot. I can call the eight ball, at the very least. Yeah, I'm not gonna count that. <clears throat> And one thing you should have noticed, at least on that one there, is I'm not really trying to blast rack blast racks open anymore. Hence the reason why my cue ball kind of just stuck to the rack. I'm trying to have a tad bit more control. what I'm expecting. Typically, I don't record ones or zeros. So since I made four on the break, which is actually kind of kind of cool that I made four on the break, I'll at least count that towards my running average.
thing that I've been trying to slowly work on. I got a couple of comments on my last straight pull video that I posted where my gameplay was a lot more relaxed. I was not moving the cue ball around so much, not punching, punching the cue ball around. And I've been trying to play like that more and more, and I, I seem to get better slash more consistent results. I seem to. Like I said, I'm going to do goofy stuff like that. Play the nine ball. That ball to break this up. I gotta be careful. Warm up games six and seven. There was even a point in time where um, I almost figured out a like a quote unquote soft break that I can do um, with the opening, or with, with this particular type of set. But I, I didn't stick with it very long.
fell up a, a, a decent break ball like I wanted. Which is less than ideal. Um... But I'm gonna have to make it work. So good break here. <laughs> Especially like that. I was hoping the cue ball would get behind and it didn't. Ah.
that's what I get for trying that. That's what I get for trying that. And that's why I wanted to, I just didn't have a, a good enough angle. I tried to force it. ball was supposed to be my break ball. I was supposed to get position on the 9, get to the 13, and basically shoot the 3 ball like this. But now I have to use the 9 um, as my break ball.
These shots tend to give me trouble playing them and, and trying to break the rock at the same time. All right, I'm satisfied with that. That was bad.
first third rack of the night. how like you can just get unlucky after the break I would have to say this is the epitome of getting unlucky after the break like seriously man you call it five Talk about an unlucky break on that one. That's 30. Uh, where am I at on my total? Have I hit 100 yet? I have not. 75. Yeah, when I hit, when I hit a, a grand total of 100 of all my scores that I've entered in, then I'll take a break. See you all who has joined me for the evening. And of course, answer any questions if there are any. Neil Spine did a good video on that particular shot, which is maximizing spin in order to get out of the corner there, because I was pretty flat um, on that ball. I tried to cheat the pocket as much as I can and let the spin uh, carry me out of the pocket. that my average is in the double digits, all things considered.
was anything like I wanted at, at all. Meaning that that wasn't the next shot that I was actually planning on, trying to get down for these three. Anybody able to see if I undercut that ball, or did I actually hit the, did I actually hit the jaw of the pocket and it just uh, didn't take it? Yeah, looks like I might be able to do one more. I'm at 94. I'll have to check that on the replay. I couldn't tell if I hit here or if I hit here and it bought and it bobbled out of the pocket. I'd be more than willing to bet that I just undercut the ball. That's usually another thing that I uh, kind of expect uh, from the breaks uh, sometimes, where when the cue ball does hug the rack, when the balls come back into the rack, it'll pop the, the cue ball off of the rack.
That's certainly not what I had in mind. Take my break ball out. Ball became a break ball if I can get to it. And I, and I overdrew the ball anyway. Get perfect position for the seven, try to stun out for the two, follow up for the eight, and then that's that. So that's an 11. Woo! This has been rough. But that goes to show you that uh, the ups and downs of this game are, are a killer. But at least, at least my average... Um, for the first set starts off in the uh, the double digits. I was actually expecting a whole lot worse. But I could be I could be happy with this uh, so far. Five times I did not get out of the, the first rack. Three times I got to the second rack and then I got that I got that third rack with that unlucky break when when I got um, hooked behind my uh, hooked behind my own ball. So bleh. Okay, so how's everybody doing tonight? Let's see here. I'm gonna try to. Robert Allison, you're wanting to know if it's uh, humid there. It's it's been getting that way. Um, we've had some rain um, here in Texas a little bit. I mean, even right now, my mini split isn't working all that great like i'm already starting to get a little warm i have the the temperature set to try to keep it um fairly cool in here uh but it's it's not really it's not really cooling off oh speaking of which i i did forget to bring uh something to drink in here i'll be right back Good reminder on that one, uh, Craig Downey. <laughs> no murky joker. I'm not going to be drinking anything that's going to impair uh, my, my, my shooting abilities, but that's funny. Oh, okay. Um, let's see here. Not too sure what I can actually uh, comment on as, as, to, as to my performance. You know, this is just... This is one of those things where I definitely try to sit down and really try to figure out like when I get good runs, the obvious answer is the obvious answer of why do I get a good run is because I don't miss. I mean that's 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 the clean and obvious answer. But then I still have to wonder sometimes that when you know when you're when you're well aware of your skill level, like what you're capable of doing and not capable of doing, like like for me. You sometimes wonder that if you know that you're playing the same way that you always play or unless you're trying to work on a new skill. Typically, I try to wonder so much about the roller coaster ride. Uh, so for like, you know, in straight pull, we look at my average here, right? You look at I mean, look at this roller coaster that I'm doing, you know, high score, low score, high score, low, you know, low score. And and just not really not really staying uh, so much consistent. Murky Joker, I know the um, I know the um, the the Christmas tree drill uh, that you're that you're talking about. Um, I'm just not a particular fan of drills that have a pattern, and you have to be able to pick apart uh, the pattern to figure out like how to solve the pattern. This is this is certainly not to down any of Neil's work. I think Neil's work is great. 
There is one particular drill that I have been trying on uh, from Niels, and that's the uh, center of the, the the center line drill, where you have a roll of balls that start at the head string, and your first ball starts at the very middle of the table, and you have to be able to shoot all 15 balls uh, from the head string at the ball that's in the middle of the table to whatever corner pocket that you want, but you also have to keep the ball that you shot within one diamond from the, uh, from the side pockets. And uh, uh, so that way you're, you're, you're trying to keep your, your ball in a zone. And if you can shoot all 15 balls, and I think you're supposed to scoot back, scoot all the balls back, like maybe by a half a diamond or by a full diamond, that is a drill uh, that, that, I, that I have tried uh, a couple of times. But if, if there's if there's usually a drill that basically is here's a pattern and can you run can you run this pattern out? I mean I'm, I might as well just play if 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 I'm if I'm gonna do that. That's that's my perspective um, on that. I particularly like to do drills where I'm working on an individual skill um, of the game. So like I've legit come in here before and I'm still trying to figure out like how do I want to formulate a video out of it where. I'll come in here and I'll shoot 50 straight in shots. Like I'll put the, the cue ball and the object ball, maybe three diamonds apart, three diamond links apart, straight into one of the corner pockets and shoot it in 50 times. And I want to see if my cue ball rocks to the left or right to show that I'm not, uh, to show if I'm not hitting as straight as I would want to be. Um, I want to see if my cue ball spins along the horizontal axis because that'll tell me if I'm hitting off center or not. You know, basically what allows me to just keen in on all my fundamentals. Do I step into the shot appropriately? Does my body feel aligned appropriately to the shot? And do I properly stroke the shot? Do I properly hit the shot straight? You know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, something like that. And I don't think making a video of me shooting 50 shots straight in a row is going to be very appealing. So I'm trying to figure out how to, how to figure out what camera angles I want to use and like what is the main point of shooting 50 straight in shots that, are, that should be relatively easy and what do you get out of it? Like that's that's what's jumbling around in my head as to how to present that in a in a very meaningful way. <clears throat> this is certainly a possibility, uh, Steve. You know the that lack drop in focus and concentration. I mean that's that that's that's always one thing. But I I know that. The easiest symptom of what ends a run, whether it's an eight ball run, a nine ball run, or a straight pull run, or whatever, is missing the transition that you had, that basically you had in mind. Even if you're, even if you're just slightly off, right? Because now you have to put in that extra effort to kind of get back in line where things kind of just flow nice and naturally. Um, so the the bad part about all that is for me to sit here and do all these rack, you know, attempts after attempts after attempts is the snowball effect, right? The, the moment I miss a shot uh, that I most likely should not be missing, then my snowball starts to get bigger and bigger. And so that's where the, the lack of focus and concentration can all uh, come in. But that's why it's also beneficial for me to do all this, especially in front of a live audience. If my focus is starting to drop, you know, what do I got to do besides one, acknowledge that my, I'm losing focus, Try to get myself back in focus, and then try to perform well when I'm able to throw up a thirty, like I like I just previously did. You know, so if I can if I can keep that up, then all of this be just you know, eventually starts to become routine. <clears throat> uh, this is interesting. Keep uh, keep stats on missed shot or missed position that was planned shot before. I don't see how I'm going to be able to put that into my program. That would definitely have to be that definitely have to be something that I would have to just keep track on on pen and paper. And I kind of know what you mean. So like there was one shot uh, that I did where I shot the ball, I shot the key ball into the side pocket, drew to the short rail, and fell into perfect uh, break ball position. I think I even saw someone comment that it was like my position was perfect. And I think that was the, that was the one where I, I, I basically missed uh, the, the next shot where I thought whether or not if I bobbled the ball or if I undercut the ball. And I, I knew to shoot it that way where instinctively I kind of thought of trying to do a three railer, shoot it into the side pocket, let the cue ball come to the long rail, go to the short rail, and then try to come behind the ball. But I've had too many instances um, where 
it just doesn't work. And so during one of my practice sessions where I would try to do a, what I would think to be a natural three railer to come around the, the, the break ball and getting decent break position, I, I set the shot back up. The moment I missed position, I didn't even try to, like I made the ball, but I didn't get in break ball position. So I didn't even try to continue the run. I set the shot back up and I said, you know what? Let's cut off that first rail and just draw to the, and just draw to the short rail. And I did. And I saw that I got better break ball position. So that's why I ended up shooting the shot the way that I did, which is, you know, experience, t t uh, experience helping me how to play and keeping track of that, which is kind of what uh, cue ball control sometimes is talking about here, where I, I try to track my mistakes and then practice like how to fix them. Now, when it comes to just missing, I mean, sure, I can just set the shot back up and just try to shoot it again. But I think key moments like that are what comes more in handy, depending upon, you know, the angle of the shot, where the ball's going to go, and does it require all the rails in order to get into break ball position? Or like I discovered, could I just cut off one rail and just go two rails and get and get break ball position? But that comes, as far as I'm concerned, that comes with experience. <clears throat> oh well <laughs> uh jeremy Wilhoit, i hope i said that correctly you said you're a great pool player and you went undefeated two days in a row and says, how do you keep that up because you have to catch fire to do so and you didn't catch fire today in the tournament so basically you know you were you were you're you're explaining what every pool player goes through Right, the the roller coaster ride. There's going to be days where you're going to shoot lights out. There's days I come in here and practice straight pull, and I average like a good twenty plus. You know, I meaning, but but I don't. Even though I average like twenty plus, I'm not getting in like the the fifties or sixties. I'm getting into like the twenties and thirties constantly, but I'm not uh, going anywhere uh, beyond that. And averaging a twenty plus is certainly aver is certainly better than averaging eleven, uh, like I'm doing right now. All right, so like, welcome to playing pool, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. That's what it's all about. Once some days you're going to be on fire and you're going to feel like nobody can beat you, and the next minute you're going to feel like it's the first time you're picking up uh, picking up a cue. Very, very natural. Very natural, as far as I'm concerned. All right, um, I'm going to go ahead and try to do a, another round here. So I'm waiting to score 205 points this time. If I can. I can get another third rack, let alone a fourth rack in here. what this game would be like if it wasn't uh, call ball, call pocket. And you just try to just slam the cue ball into the rack and, and, and hope something falls and if it does you just keep on running.
I show a splatter on the eight. Exactly the way that I want it. And I try to call the three ball. How do you, how do you like them apples? Unlucky bump on the ten. All right, so that that ball doesn't that ball doesn't count. So pull one out. Six. That's a nine. Like seriously. I thought I was going to knock the 15 loose. That didn't work. system.
come on. Start to see better spreads. Now I just need to have better shot making averages here. Interestingly enough, I can hear people outside of my garage. So let me just check in. Sure, nothing funny's going on out there. Let me 
looks like it's just kids across the street. Okay, okay so that was 14. Do it. Get out of the way, one. so frustrating. All right, so the harder breaks are at least getting you off to a good start, but I'm just missing shots now. Obviously can't start like that though. Even still, some of my opening shots are just the pits. What do I mean? It's like I'm off, which is odd because I think the past couple of days that I've been in here practicing 10 ball, which I understand is a completely different game, but I'm not off when I play 10 ball. Try the try the drawing break. Same result, meaning that my opening shot is a tad bit different. Whoops. I don't remember the last time I've done that on stream.
to make something happen. Exactly the way I thought it was going to. Play the three ball. Look how beautiful that six ball looks, but I can't see it.
I'm just making this harder on myself. Let's try the one ball. Another third rack in there. Sure, if that was actually the smartest decision in the world, but I wanted to make sure I can break out most of that stuff that was down there. I ruined a bunch of break balls when I did that. It's okay, we can try 
to turn, turn some of these in, into brake poles. The best thing about straight poles. Yeah, see, so I, I touched the five ball, so technically I should end my run. But we'll keep on going. See, like that, I just, ugh. Oh. Well, at least I have the seven ball now. But I just turned the three ball into a break ball. And the rest of the rack. As long as I don't screw up. Gonna hold it against me that I touched the five ball. Been waiting to see if you're going to come in here, huh? You want to go on your favorite chair? All right. Well, as long as no one holds it against me that I, that I tap the five ball with my hand, we're on the fourth rack. But technically speaking, yeah, my, my run should have ended the moment I touched the five ball. And this is gross. <clears throat> Make sure it's nice. Right. Just all I can do is call one of the corner balls and do like. Uh, do like you would normally do in eight ball when you do a second ball break. If I hit the ten ball, I want to call the nine. If I hit the fourteen, I want to call the six. So from the angle that I'm at, I'm going to try to call the nine. Okay, almost made it, <clears throat> but hey. Got a fourth rack in there. I just got really bad break ball position. The end pattern wasn't so great either, since I had that 
that last ball where it was at. I should have just drew to the side rail just to make sure that I was going to have the back cut angle, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to risk the back cut angle being like too thin. So I tried to just draw back into perfect position, which turned out to be the mistake. I should I should have just drew to the side rail, and not worry about anything. have a little bit of consistency I think Oh, that's not necessary. Come on. I'm actually going to try that shot again. That's going to be my next opener. All right, so this might be the last inning before I do another break. We're actually going to try that shot again. I was a little bit on the inside angle. So I have to hit this harder since I'm drawing into the rack. And it, I saw that one. I overcut the ball. Because that's what I was trying to do. But failed.
That is not the position I wanted. I'm trying to get position on the 14. So I can do a secondary break. That's something I normally just would not expect. Plus three. And I gotta do another rack. Decent break ball, maybe the four ball, unless they develop a better one. Here, if I bump into that 13, the 11 should turn into a break ball. missed anyway. Oh, jeez. That didn't work the way that I wanted it to. All right, so there's three left on the table. That's a 12. All right, so that'll end this particular session. And, okay, I mean, at least I'm keeping my average in the double digits.
guys will be able to see better in, uh, in this camera. Don't squirm. Oh, I guess, I guess everybody's not going to... There we go. How about if I do that? Everybody can, everybody can see the cat. Okay, so now we have a total of 18 attempts uh, that I've made so far. Um, did I do better? Yeah, I, I did do better because of that 43. I think the, wasn't the, the last one done in 10 attempts to, to, to have a cumulative total of um, 100? And now I've done it in 8 attempts, I think. I, I, don't, I don't exactly remember. But a total of 28 racks. And I was only able to complete 10 of them. Of the 28 racks, that's a total of 392 balls, and I've made 214 of them, averaging 11, 11 points per inning. I mean, if I'm at least averaging double digits, that's what I'm always happy about. But we all know that I want, we all want me to see, we all want me to be able to average more than 14, right? Because that, that clearly means that I'm just, uh, <laughs> he just does not like this at all. <laughs> if I'm averaging at least 14 plus, I'm, I'm consistently, what are you going to do? I'm consistently getting out of the first rack if, if, if I'm at least doing that. But that's not happening right now. What? <laughs> All right. You don't like this, do you? There you go. All right, everybody. I hope you all got your uh, Zelda fix. He's, he's, you can see him right down there now. <laughs> Ooh, Okay. You know what? I gotta, I gotta really appreciate this. <laughs> the Lil Chris fan club. The first time I started seeing this, uh, this, this account pop up and comment on some of my videos, I, I couldn't help but notice the the profile picture, which is an old picture of me when I did. I, I think it was it was during a live stream where I wore a uh, tuxedo bow tie with a button up shirt and I wore dress slacks and stuff because I was showcasing my uh, Predator tuxedo in a live stream <laughs> that I was playing. So to be able to chop a picture out of that live stream and create an account called <laughs> Little Chris Fan Club, it's just super awesome. Uh, but to answer your question, I do believe, um, I do believe the cat is like f five or six, five or six years old. I, I, I don't, I don't know the um, exact, um exact age i'd have to ask the boss uh but <laughs> i can't i can't help but be uh flattered uh by the, by this uh by this account name which i think is totally awesome <clears throat> uh so i see that there's some there's some conversations about the uh the aramith blacks when we're talking about change the um change the five ball to pink and leave the leave the four ball purple you know, this is going to, I'm just going to make my, um, I'm just going to give, I'm going to weigh in uh, my opinion on basically what happened to, to Joey Tate. Before I do, Billy Jack wants to know uh, what is the weight of my cue sticks. I typically like to shoot uh, with 19.5 ounces or at least somewhere around there. Um, I prefer my break cues to be a little bit lighter, usually somewhere between 18 and 18.5, but I like my playing cues to be around 19.5. Uh, Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Okay, so there was there, there's been, I, I can't highlight um, obviously every chat. But there's a bunch of conversations about um, the the Arab with blacks because I can see where they're talking about um, change the five ball to pink, keep the four ball the same, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You know, all I can say about what happened to Joey Tate was that it was completely unfortunate that he basically had a you know, what, what we refer to as a brain fart, right? Because it was what? It was seven to seven when um, it had occurred. Now, I, I haven't gone back and looked at every single solitary rack to know, well, how many times did he shoot at the pink four ball and the, and the uh, purple five ball, right? But at, but at the very least, there were 14 racks where that mistake was not made. And then during the course of a run uh, where he could have got on the hill, that's when the mistake was made. So it's, to me, it's just not justified to argue that 
the colors shouldn't change or, or, or anything like that because I'm more than certain, more than certain, the vast majority of y'all here in the chat, I know I've done it, you know, et cetera, et cetera. What I'm, what, with what I'm about to describe. When you're playing eight ball, I don't care what set you're using, what pool set you're using, or what pool ball set you're using. How many times have any of y'all shot at the eight ball and forgot that you had a ball on the table? I know I've done it. Now, it's, you know, some of y'all may have never done it before, and that's fine. But I know somebody here in the chat has had, has had, uh, has had that happen before, right? So are you going to blame the ball set on that instance as well? Like the, the, argument, does, the argument doesn't stay consistent uh, when, when, you, when you phrase it like that. I understand what um, TV is trying to do, right? Because there, there are too many times. I, I had someone just recently comment on a... Um, video that I posted on Facebook where I broke and ran um, a 10 ball rack with a very nice pop break where they, they, they could hardly tell my three ball from my five ball. And in some cases, when you look at the cue ball, the one ball and the nine ball, sometimes it's, it's hard to tell, especially, um, especially on, you know, on camera, on television, you know, the, to be able to distinguish the balls. Now, Everybody's making good arguments as far as I'm concerned. Like you could leave the four ball purple and just change the five ball to pink. I mean, I'm not, that's a good argument. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to um, argue against that, but I, I can't just sit there and just simply say that because the pink is four and the purple is five, like that's like the most terrible thing in the world. And you know, that you should, you shouldn't have done that um, or, or, or anything uh, like that. When, like I said, if, if you've made the mistake before of accidentally um, or better yet, when you come to the table, you forget what set you are. You forget that your solids are stripes and you shoot the wrong set before your opponent will kindly tell you that you're shooting the wrong set. Um, you know, you don't, you don't brain, you don't blame the ball set on mistakes like that. Right. So I don't, I don't see how it, you can actually apply it to, um, to nine ball as well. That's at least, that's at least my take on it. Uh, let's see here. I want to see if anybody. I mean, you know, this is a good point, Eves. It's it's not TV anymore. It's small. It's small phones. I mean, yeah, that that's 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 a really good point as to why we want to try to make sure that the colors pop um, a whole lot. You know, despite the fact of whether or not if we're ch if we're changing the colors um, or not. And this is relatable. I mean, you know, when you say that you want the uh, the colors that you grew up with, I mean, change is hard, right? Change is change is really difficult. Look look how much look how much resistance the uh, Accurax and the Magic Racks got with change, right? Everybody, I think at the very beginning, everybody was like super happy, like yes, finally the perfect racks. You know, we don't have to worry about gaps in the rack. We don't have to worry about people giving us bad racks or anything. But then they start realizing. Oh crap! Now we're starting to get cookie cutter uh, layouts when we break. Uh, breaking and running is becoming uh, so much easier and easier. This sucks. Let's go back to having gaps in the rack and having random racks. Like, you know, cha change is difficult, but at some point in time, we got to be able to embrace the change. I, I would think at some point in time. <clears throat> Let's see here. Terrence Levine, you're saying the brain fart was probably more due to putting SVB on the ropes and the poor kid just, I mean, but that, that, that I think that's all included, right? Um, uh, it, it's just the fact that it happened. It's like, here, here's a 17 year old, uh, very talented young man, you know, that, that's, that's playing up against the, uh, I think currently Shane's ranked the number two player in the world. I think Joshua Filler finally took the number one spot in the, at least by Fargo. You know he's playing wonderfully. He's keeping up toe to toe with uh, with a world champion. You know on the you know has the opportunity to get on the hill. And when you watch the run out, I think the, the 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 most interesting part is when you watch the run out. He had shape on the four, right? He just came around the table and shot the five, and and just and and obviously realized it um, at and realized it at the last second that that he ended up uh, shooting the wrong ball, right? So. 
I can't imagine what it would be like to be in a situation like that. The adrenaline's pumping, like you're you're just you're just on the go, and all of a sudden, oops, you know, you make you end up making you know that grave of, of a mistake. <laughs> now we're talking now we're now we're just talking nonsense here change the shape of the balls and <laughs> do whatever like how are you gonna get the that's just too funny that's just too funny uh, like this right here from Bree. the tv people should put rfid chips in the balls and have the numbers float over the balls we don't we don't need to change this because they're cheap <laughs> that's just too funny and here, here's here's my thing, and this this is what I, this is what I like more, most of all. It's one of those things where you can almost say like Joey will never probably will probably never make that mistake again, right? It's just like it, you knew what you were coming into. You know the match matchroom events use the Aramith black uh, balls and stuff. Regardless if you've ever practiced with them or not, you would know to yourself this is a matchroom event. Uh, pink four, purple five, pink four, purple five, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So you just you just got to be able to, you know, everybody's playing on the same battlefield, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Who knows? Like, how, how long did it take before this change occurred? And then, you know, before you know it, we're going to end up having another change uh, further on down the line, one way, one way or the other. Uh, let's see here. Thank you, Eves. I was, I was just about to hop on that, but thank you very much. Well, technically speaking, John, if you listen to the interviews, he, he inadvertently, in my opinion, I'm, and I'm certainly not trying to talk bad about Joey. I think Joey played fantastic. I think he's, a, I mean, he's obviously a better pool player than I am, but if you listen to the interview, you can technically hear him make some kind of an excuse where he basically does say that I just don't practice uh, or how, how, how much he's ingrained in thinking that the four ball is purple um, and, and, and not, and not be pink. Right. Cause he, he did say that um, in the interview and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hold it against him uh, for, for, for something like that. Like I said, it, to me, to me, the mistake that was made is no different than like with the comparison in eight ball um that uh that i had made before to where you forget uh that, that there's still one more one more ball out of your set still on the table before you shoot the eight ball and like i said in an instance like that you're not going to blame uh the ball set you know you're you're going to end up blame, blaming yourself so like to me this is this is almost very uh joey's incident is, it, to me is almost very equivalent uh to some to something like that you know it's just you got to be aware of what's on the table one one way or the other <clears throat> All right, let's see. How long have I been playing? Almost two, uh, just a little over two hours. Check a couple of things here. I got 60 of y'all in here with 60 likes. This is wonderful. Thank you so much for being here. I did see that I have a couple of people watching on Facebook as well. So thank you so much for being here. If you haven't done so already, um, please give this stream a thumbs up. I would really, really appreciate it. It just helps me out in the, uh, the YouTube algorithm. Uh, so more people can discover the live stream while I'm still playing. And then, of course, after the fact, <laughs> they can watch me struggle um, as bad as I did there. But if you're also at least watching on Facebook, it would do me a really huge favor, not only if you like that stream, but then share it to your um, Facebook profile and any of your favorite pool groups. So, And if you're just now joining the stream and you haven't checked out the uh, the pinned comments, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, I do have a giveaway going on right now where um, I'm giving away two uh, JFlower uh, power jump cues. Um, I did a product review uh, video on them a couple of week uh, a couple of weeks back or a week ago. Um, uh, you can find the link in the uh, the pinned comment. If you watch that video and follow the instructions at the end, you could possibly be an eligible winner. Uh, to win one of those two cues, because two cues are not going to go to the same person. So you have to be able to like the video, because this is all, this is on YouTube. You have to like the video, um, leave a comment on the video, be subscribed to the channel, and then make sure that your um, subscription list is public. 
because in a couple more weeks, I'm going to go live just like I am now. And I'm going to randomly select uh, two comments uh, from that product review video. And when I select that comment, if um, I verify that you're my subscriber by going to the channel, seeing your subscription list and seeing that I'm in the subscription list, then you'll be a winner. And I'll, and I'll, I'll pick uh, two different people because if the randomizer happens to pick the same person, I'm just going to draw again. But whoever's comment gets uh, selected, if I go to their channel, and this is regardless if you pr uh, produce content or not, you don't have to produce content. I just have to be able to verify that you're a subscriber. So if I go to your channel and you don't have your subscription list public, or let alone I'm not in your subscription list, then you're not an eligible uh, winner and I'll just select another comment. If anybody's watched any of my last uh, giveaway live streams, we've had people where I've selected their comment, I went to their channel and I wasn't in their subscription list or their subscription list wasn't made public. Matter of fact, I had uh, one giveaway, I think this was for the JF, JF Force break queue that I did, where the, the, the randomizer selected a local that comments, somebody that I know, that I, I play pool with that, that's here in my local area. But when I went to their channel, their subscription list wasn't public. And you would, you would think like, I know, that, you know, I know the person follows me. I know they subscribe because when we see each other in person, he's like, man, this video you did was great, blah, blah, blah. But they didn't follow the rules, right? Because that's how much of a stickler I am on, on following the rules. He ended up even texting me later on when the stream was over, like, oh my gosh, like, how do you do this? I can't believe I didn't get it, blah, blah, blah. But he understood that those are the rules that I set, right? So I try to make it, um, I try to make it as, as fair as possible. And so not only do I have uh, that giveaway going, if you go to my Facebook page, uh, Lil Chris Pool Player, um, you'll find a post where I'm giving away also some town products because I don't have their, I need to bring the logo that I have in my office here so I can put it on this live stream. Uh, but I am uh, recently sponsored by uh, Town Billiards as well. Um, I got a lot of uh, gear uh, from them. And um, I ended up uh, creating three package giveaways. And the, and the package includes a V10 uh, town chalk, um, a chalk holder um, with a choice of um, I, um, with a choice of a uh, medium, large, or extra large glove because I only have left-handed gloves. So if you if you're a left-handed player and you need a right-handed glove, unfortunately, I just don't have that um, at the moment. I can eventually, I can eventually get some. Um, I forgot that there is a um, sticker and a v uh, V10 sticker and a V10 patch. And then you also get a uh, choice of um, either having a uh, town fusion tip or a, or a uh, town uh, pro medium tip. That way you can take it to your uh, local Q Smith or whatever and, and have them put them on if you want to uh, try it. Uh, Aiden Derry, you're saying that what if you don't have a YouTube channel? Um, do you have a Gmail address? Because if you have a Gmail address, you have a YouTube channel. Have you ever commented on any YouTube videos? Because if you have, you have a, you have a YouTube channel. You just don't have any content on your channel. That's, that's the difference. It's like, chances are, if you have a, if you have a Gmail address, you have a YouTube channel. You just don't, you just don't put anything on it. And then let alone, if you don't have one, just make one. All it all it takes is um all it takes is the Gmail address. All right, let's see here. I think that's enough blabbing uh, for now. So, like I said, I want to thank everybody for being here, and let's keep the show going. Let's see what I can do on this round of attempts. I'm at two fourteen. I need to try to get to three fourteen before I take another. Or call it a night. Make sure the stream's okay, and I turned off uh, the face cam. Go in. <laughs> there's, a, there's a good way to start a run after, after taking a break.
it's always so weird how sometimes when I like this is the ideal result that I would want my cue ball to do, and then sometimes the cue ball just ends up way back, way way down here, and I don't think I hit it any differently. And clearly, the the difference would be is how is the cue ball glancing off of the rack? That obviously um, has an effect on the, uh, the end result. Was probably not smart to do that. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't smart at all to do that. Crap. I guess I'm going to try to bank the five. All right, there's, there's at least a decent recovery. From a not so smart decision. Gosh, like mistakes like that. Mistakes like that are just uncalled for. Might as well call that one a brain fart.
into position. Now, one of the points that I was trying to make before, as you know, here you see that I'm basically struggling tonight. Like, there's, there's no, there's no doubt about that. But every time I come out here, whether I'm on a live stream or whether I'm just, you know, recording a, recording an attempt or doing whatever, I would have to think that I'm trying to play the same exact way. Using the same strategies, I'm trying to analyze the rack the same way, pick similar patterns, you know, etc., etc. But then I get all these up and down results. I don't get consistent results, and it makes me wonder why. It really, it really does. And what has to what has to change with me besides the obvious answer of quit missing? What really has to change to see better results? greatest of positions either. There's more than likely a better pattern that I could have chosen.
change, but you're almost supposed to go into the clutter, not come off the edge and like clearly get the scratch. Just 14. And something like this is just more ideal for me. It clearly means I need to work on this back that angle. Thank you. 
change the tint a bit. Our bonnet. Shots don't need to be that difficult. More than on. Maybe make sure to, to, to cut the first ball more to make sure that the combo is more on than what it appeared to be. That's only a three. So that's why that's what I'm doing there. I should have looked at it closer. All right, that, that's that's the clear sign of me wearing down. Then. If I when I start missing shots like that, that's a six. So here's some tips that I can try to give. If you ever find yourself struggling as much as I do, because what I tend to do is, if I'm if I'm not playing slow enough already. I'm going to start playing slower. Really take my time and, and, and go through these shots, which can be in and of itself tiring. But, 
I mean, I, I'd rather I'd rather go through that than to. as poorly as I am.
almost. I didn't really want to touch that ball. I didn't even come all the way around to get position for the for the six. The plus twelve. Twenty-six. Ugh. So many times now that I've overcome. Lucky? I did. I got lucky.
off the rail. Come on. Not believe I did that. One of those ones where you're you're afraid to hit it too hard, you end up at the other end of the table, so you end up just hitting it too soft and end up with that. Now, I've had this happen a couple of times. And I have come up with a solution. Actually, I have two solutions now. First solution is to cut it inside and flare the cue ball. But now I can try to cut it in the corner and still, and still go into the rack. This, both of these shots are hard. And then, of course, that route, the cue ball goes up table. And the one ball is a really good break ball right now, but I don't have anything else.
Okay, give me a second. I need to take a small break. All right, I'm back. Oh. Duggar, you couldn't have said it any better. Straight pool is a tough game. It is a tough game. All right, so now I, I'm going to go ahead and give everybody one more set um, before I call it a night, but we are going to take one small break <laughs> before I do. Um, so, yeah, let's see here. We're looking at a total of 28 attempts. So this time it took me 10, I think, Unless I'm mistaken, it took me 10 attempts to get 100 or 100 plus. Then it took eight attempts to get 100 plus, And then it took another 10 attempts to get 100 plus. So we can see that 18 times I did not get out of the first track. Eight times that I did get um, to the um, second rack. One time I did. Uh, one time I got to the third rack. And then one time I got to the fourth rack with that 43 pending. Of course, no one's going to hold me accountable <laughs> for, for um, touching the, uh, the five ball. Whew. Okay. But I can't say like, you know, when, when I'm, when I'm not recording, when I'm recording my straight pull attempts, I'm not bothered with, you know, the stream and everything. It's just like, I'm just running. Ah, oh, so you are who I, who I thought you were. This is, this is one, this is one of my locals. Uh, really, really good pool player too. When you watched me there, uh, that I always walk forward into my shots, and tonight it looks like you're uh, that I'm not plant that I'm not planting my back foot. I mean, I'll have to, I'll have to look into that, and that's what I meant by slowing down uh, to make sure that my pre-shot routine is staying consistent. So I'll definitely make sure that I uh, keep that in mind um, on this uh, last set. I, I know exactly uh, what you're talking about when 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 you say that. So I'll, I'll definitely uh, pay attention uh, to that. <clears throat> Whew. Okay. Um, I can at least say um, that um, my next uh, live stream um, is going to be straight pool. Um, I have oh, no, why did I say straight pool? Um, it's going to be me um, playing uh, 
why am I brain fart, right? We were just talking about brain farts and here I am having a brain fart. Um, it's going to be reviewing uh, two AP8 matches. Um, I do have two more um, that are um, queued up. So um, that'll be during my next live stream, um, I, which I'd have to double check my schedule. Um, I think I might be able to do it on Sunday. Uh, yeah, because it looks like I have a buy from BCA League uh, this coming Sunday. So this coming Sunday is, I I, I might be able to do um, review my my next two APA matches that uh, that I have recorded. Uh, in the meantime, I've got some other video ideas on um, that I can do. Oh, holy crap! That I can do for uh, recording here. Eves, you are always such a wonderful person. Thank you so much for the six dollars and sixty six Canadian super chat. Really do appreciate it, bud. Really do appreciate it. Uh, and just just so y'all know, like you know, Eves is one of my moderators, and he always uh, lets me know that if I ever pick any of his names in any of the giveaways that I do, that I just re-roll, uh, so uh, so somebody else can um, uh, have a chance at winning uh, the giveaways. Whew. I'm like I'm like drawing a blank. I must be getting tired uh, for 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 that. Hey Doug, I really do appreciate that. Um, you know, don't be don't be uh, don't be such a stranger. You should come by um, every every once in a while. Matter of fact, I can have you here at my house, and we can uh, we can play some heads up uh, for everybody. I think everybody would uh, would enjoy that because uh, uh, Duggar's a uh, lefty, so we can have. You know, South Paul versus, versus Little Chris. I think I think that would be fun. You don't play anymore. Oh, come on, give me a break. <laughs> it's like riding a bike. You never forget. <laughs> oh my goodness. <clears throat> I still think I still think that would be I still think that would be a lot of fun. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Just gonna scroll through real quick and see if I can find any questions unless they start coming up because if if not I'm just gonna go ahead uh, just start shooting again let's see here don't really see anything all I see is you know just looks like everybody's just enjoying themselves and just uh, chatting amongst themselves that's always really good to see Missing. Okay, no, I guess that looks normal. Okay, cool. No issues there. Oh, this is a thing. Um, so yet, yet you you typed uh, three different messages, but you're asking a question. It says when you're racking them. Uh, do I rack them in order to get more of an idea of what's happening on the break? Yes and no. I, I typically have some ideas uh, based on uh, some of the stuff. Uh, or as, as many racks as I've been, uh, that I've played in straight pool, um, I do kind of have an idea of how the balls are going to react on certain breaks to where like the, the standard side break that I, that I keep starting with, there's typically um, – a ball that comes out that automatically sets up to be in a break ball position and that's the ball that I'm typically going to try to use um, and then all but it all still just really depends on the hit uh, that I do and so you know when you're when you're talking about this part right here calling out the key ball after the break and stuff like I, I I've done all that before and that's stuff that I've done in the past uh, when I usually start my live streams I'll start with, by doing a whole lot of commentary uh, when I play uh, but then as the night goes on, I play less and or I start talking less and less and less and try to just uh, focus more. Um, so I think if 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 anything, like if, I'll, I'll do full commentary um, on this uh, on this last set um, and then uh, and then still try to focus on uh, everything that we're talking about. So with all that in mind, let's go ahead and get started then. Uh, let's see here. Let's turn that off. Full commentary, 
full full um, layout breakdowns and whatnot. This is what, how many total points do I currently have? Three sixteen. So when I get to four four sixteen or more, that's when we'll call it a match. Okay. So standard break shot. I always like to set up with the cue ball on uh, what's referred to on the inside angle of the cut since I'm back cutting this. That way I can just shoot the, the cue ball with top spin, drive the cue ball into the rack, which should push the cue ball forward to the short rail that y'all see multiple times and then, come, and then come back out. Unless I happen to give myself some sort of an angle where I'm glancing off what would be um, the bottom of the ball from my perspective because then the cue ball will arc this way. How it tried to arc and then just went forward again, so I caught the um, I caught the uh, the bottom of, of a ball that's in the rack. <clears throat> so one thing that I could do for that I could do for improvement is to is to study more and more how the cue ball is going to go into the rack and whether I'm putting top spin or bottom spin, and and try to accurately guesstimate what part of the ball am I actually going to hit. So now when we look at this layout here, instantly I start thinking about this this four ball is the break ball because it's literally almost like exactly where I just started, right? But clearly we have a problem, right? With the 14 ball being there, so I got to figure out how to move that ball. And when you look at the four ball being uh, the break ball, you'd want to know, well, what ball can I shoot? This is kind of like almost eight ball mentality. If this was the eight ball and I just wanted to have an easy shot to be able to shoot the eight ball in, what ball would I possibly want to shoot last in order to have an easy uh, way of getting position on this ball? That almost makes me look at this. Because if I end up straight on this ball and I just play a stop shot, well, then I've got the same exact shot that I did when I just started the entire rack. And so if this is possibly going to be my last ball, it doesn't have to be, but if it's possibly going to be my last ball, then I might consider, well, what ball do I want to shoot at last before this ball? And that's going to be one of these balls down here because I can play any one of these balls into this corner pocket, use the side rail to come back for position on here, and then get position on my key ball. So... When I look at that, then those are going to be balls that I'm going to want to ignore. Now, while I'm trying to ignore those, I have a mess that I need to clean up. And then, like I said, i got to be able to move the, four, uh, the 14 ball out of the way. I might be able to use the 13 ball to move the 14 out of the way. Unless I happen to get perfect position here to shoot the 14 here. I can start with the three ball. Well, I don't, intend, I don't want to accidentally start bumping in the balls. Right here, I can use the 13 to get position on the 14, and that, that, that takes care of that issue. So now I'm going to leave it alone because I'm going to try to find another way to break it open. And this is where things start to change because this is where like the, 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 the entire layout can break down because now I have to come up with something completely different. I'm taking out my key ball uh, because that's what I have to do. Because if I attempt to shoot the 14 now, I'm clearly going to run into the four ball and, dis and disrupt that possible break ball. Are there other break balls that I have? Sure. The eight ball could possibly be a break ball. The nine ball, even though it's a little low in the rack, could be a uh, break ball. And then, of course, I can make a different one as well. So when I look at this, I guess from here, I'm just going to stun over, and that's going to give me position on the 8 or even the, the 9 ball. Unless, of course, I hit it too soft. So I don't have position on the 9. I do have position on the 7. I do have position on the 8. And the 14 doesn't pass by the 8. Or the 14 does not pass by the 4 either. So it's not ideal for me to, I don't think it's ideal for me to shoot this 7 ball and go into the 10 and break that stuff up unless I'm relying on this 5 ball to be my insurance shot. This is kind of the same concept that you would think of when you're playing 8 ball as well. If you're going to go into a clutter, there's... There's not a guarantee that you're going to have a shot by breaking up the clutter.
clutter, so you want to make sure that you have a wall that's outside of it to where it can be a backup shot for you in, get, in case things go wrong. But right now, that's this is kind of looking like maybe the best shot. Let alone, it doesn't. It doesn't matter if I miss. All right, let's try. Let's try that. Break that down again. And all because I missed the, the position on getting on the 14 from the 13. That's where. That's where everything started to break down. And I, I just have to have better cue ball control, better cue ball execution, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to be able to keep the rack alive and get and get back in line. Try this again. Same standard break or opening break. The ball gets out this time. So now we look and see. Look, the, uh, we got the looks like the four ball again. Um, even though it's a little bit higher on the rack and it's closer to the rack, still probably the the best uh, the best break ball. Obviously a mess that I got that I have to clean up around the rack. So here I'm looking at stopping the 12 for position on the 14. slightly so I can see the 15 ball. Oh. So ideally what I was thinking about doing was coming around for this 7, but now if I wanted to, I could shoot the 15 and come into the 2-3 clutter, but what shot am I going to have? So that's what I meant by an insurance shot. So if I literally had a ball sitting right here, then I would shoot that. I would shoot the 15 in and try to break this stuff up. And if I had whatever ball that I have right here, that would be my insurance shot. But I don't have that ball. Looks like the 11 ball is also a break ball. It's outside of the it's outside of the rack. So now I'm going to change my plan a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and take care of these up, up table balls here. Seven. I can still obviously shoot the seven. But see now, this is where I'm going to kind of, kind of hope of, of what's going to happen here. Because I'm going to shoot this fifteen ball and come into the, and come into this cluster and try to open things up, which could ruin my break ball. So a little fortunate. Four ball still intact. I bumped it a little bit, no big deal. So this is kind of like my last issue that I have to try that I have to try to fix. And yeah, currently I can't shoot yet. I just thump that one to try to make sure that I get out of the corner there. So all I really have is this three ball. See, my cue ball is going to come to the rail and come back out. I'm not sure if I'm going to run into the eight and the six. That'd be great if I did.
but not flat like that. Now, fortunately, I'm a little straight on this eighth. Hit it hard enough? Okay. So now the rack is what's now the rack's in, in what's what would be referred to as a solved state. So this is where I would kind of want to play like um, this is what my end pattern. Imagine still that if this were my eight ball and these were the rest of the balls that I have in my set, what's the least amount of cue ball movement that I could possibly execute and get decent position on this ball? Like, do I want to shoot this ball last by cutting it into the corner, hit the side rail, and come back out for a break ball position? Do I want to leave this as the last ball, shoot it into the corner, and come two rails around over here? Do I possibly want to leave this as the last ball and shoot it into any of the sides or any of the corner and just kind of leave the cue ball here being further away? Those are the things that, that I would have to think about. But then I also have to think about that isolated 13 ball up there. I want to almost get there as soon as I possibly can. Or do I want to use this 11 as a break ball? Because I'm already perfect on the four, like I can shoot it now and not move the cue ball at all. Doesn't look like the nine passes by the 11. It does not. I shoot the 11, I'm going to bump it to the 9, which means I can cut it up next to the 4, so that's less than ideal. So it looks like I'm going to have a little bit of cue ball movement to try to finish this off. But then I'm going to try to minimize it as I, as I get closer and closer to the end. Well, again, it doesn't matter if I miss. Right, so I shoot this ball, blah blah blah. Right, that's that's the whole, that's the whole thing. None of that planning matters if, if you miss the nine. Great. <laughs> I never like starting like this with my cue ball all the way down here. All right. So that's usually just to get myself into the rack. We got a couple of options here with this being a break ball, this break, this being a break ball and this being a key ball for either of them, or this being a key ball for that ball. So I'm generally going to be ignoring uh, these three. I eventually got to deal with that eight ball. Balls that are on the rail are also considered trouble balls. If it, um, you want to be like somewhere, you know, a good half a diamond away from the rail. Rails. So I kind of want to prioritize this 15 ball so that way I can shoot Five, or prioritize the, the four ball as well. Whoops. Like I said, you don't want to unnecessarily bump into bump into balls. That's not a good thing. Though I did put the 12 ball in a better break ball position, so now I can try to maybe draw into the 10. Now, now the 12 ball is in a much better uh, break ball position than it 
was. Oh, I'm just missing shots. I, I got no excuse for that if I'm just gonna, if I'm just gonna miss shots. But no matter uh, how much planning uh, that I put into getting out of the rack. Mistake. And see, that's the other thing too. I mean, if it's if you just have bad cue ball execution, that obviously is going to start changing your plans. Six ball, side pocket. Hello there. Welcome back. You go back to your chair. So the one good thing about, I could say about straight pull is when you see stuff like this, like I really have to have my cue ball on a very tight string uh, to be maneuvering it around uh, the way that I, the way that I try. Because like I said, you don't want to unnecessarily bump into balls and, and move it, move them when they don't need to be. Like I just did right there. And I was supposed to get position on the fly, but I didn't even, didn't even really get it. Five in the side, I meant. A half position on the five, but not where I intended. was watching me that when, when I'm ready to settle into a shot, my right foot goes down, and then I step in with my left foot.
slow down, slow down. There we go. So this is not the ideal end pattern, but it's an end pattern that's that's going to work. Right, because my cue ball is a perfect uh, break ball position where I can cut the eight ball in, drive the cue ball into the rack, and try to open, and then try to continue the run. Because that's ideally what you're going to want to do when you reach the end pattern phase, is try to minimize your cue ball movement. But if you just get slightly out of line, then you then you're really going to start moving your cue ball around, which leaves wide margins of errors that could, possibly, that could possibly happen. So here I'm on the outs. When I say, if I draw a parallel line to the side run, we can see that my cue ball's on this side. That means I have to draw into the rack, which means I'm going to hit this a little bit harder than if I were back cutting this. Typically, I'd want to get to this rail and then, and then try to spin back out if I can. <laughs> With this being a, an eight-foot table, imagine uh, if I was playing on a nine-foot table and I have to shoot like a two-ball or whatever, the shots would be very, very far away or farther away than what they are. I probably got new people in the chat. You used to be just playing on an eight footer? <laughs> All right, so here's the insurance shot that I'm talking about. If I cut the 10 ball into the corner pocket, you can hopefully see how the cue ball will come into the rail and then come into this stack, right? Hopefully opening this stuff up. If I don't have a shot on any of this, that also means I can disturb this, which I think is fine. But this nine ball being where it's at, hopefully ends up being a shot that I can have if things go wrong here. But it allows me to open up the rack with, with at least a good a good chance of having a shot afterwards. Kind of like that. All right, so now the rack's a lot more open. I still got a lot of tight movement that I got to do here in the middle, but that's okay. It's better than what it was, and you can see I have a shot at the nine ball. So now my 11 ball is free and clear. This is kind of an issue, so I'm going to be prioritizing it. Well, I wish I was flatter on this 15 because it would be 15 in the corner, 5 up here, 3 in the side, easy break ball position. This, this is clearly a little bit different. I wonder if I can shoot the 5 in the side. I can, but it's tight. So now what makes me wonder is can I go from the 15 to the Five, and then from the five to the three. Or did I just keep my cue ball movement smaller and do three, five, fifteen, and then come around for the eleven?
Or I can just do 15, 3, 5, and then I have to make the 5 come off the rail into break ball position. But those, those are all my options. Because I clearly do not want to shoot the 11. The 11 ball is getting me into the next round. Now that I'm back cutting the five ball, we can see that I can try to stun over here and come back out. I don't want to try to stun into perfect position. I want to go ahead and hit this rail. And stop! Oh, that's... Clearly I hit that too hard, but it looks like I still have a bit of a cut angle. That just means I have to hit the ball harder to draw the ball into the rack. Oh jeez, never mind. I'm not drawing that. That's that's nice and flat. I'll get stuck to the rack. I'm gonna softly follow this ball and try to see if I think it's I think it's this ball that's gonna come loose. If I, if I do this right. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I missed I missed the rack entirely. So again, this doesn't always work. But it comes up from time to time. It's um, lined up perfectly for the six. Like if I come over here and think about how I'm going to hit the six ball, and I'm doing a second ball break and eight ball, four ball, corner pocket. And I, I barely missed it. <laughs> of course, I scratched. That was just a 28, that doesn't count. Or no, 29, because I did make the uh, the next ball. Let me see if I can do the soft break that I was talking about. Let's see if this works. Watch this. If I get this to work. This is the idea. Then I just go for an instant re-break. All, all, all I do is just keep piecing the rack open. All I did was just, since I just gently opened it up, a lot of balls are possible to make. Natural, very nice natural uh, breakup uh, opportunities. The only issue that I clearly would run into is like, am I going to have a break ball when this is all said and done? All right, I just knocked the nine ball away. It might have to be my eight ball. That ended up being a break ball. And I don't know if you want to call it the, the, the Corey dual break of, of straight pool. When you soft break like that.
Now my break ball might have to be my 12. Ah, never mind. So you can see if I try to play that route, that I have to do a whole lot more moving since I'm, since I'm barely even developing uh, developing the wrap open uh, off the start. Uh, but it does, It I mean, I've, I've made it work a couple of times. I've gotten some decent runs uh, playing like that. Because when, when, I, when I break like that, at least with the uh, draw, I know that I'm going to glance off of the rack, which is basically what I, what I want to happen. Versus kind of slamming into the rack. So like if I try to do it again, I know I'm going to glance off of the 11 or the 13 and kind of just slide, and kind of just slide up the rack. But if I hit the 11 full, the cue ball is just going to stick to it. Kind of like that. And so, I mean, there's, there's a couple of ways I can play this. I can either try to break the rack again with the 14, play a stop shot on the 12 and break the rack open with the um, 15, one or the other. Check to see if there's any, any combos in the, uh, the stack. I have to admit, though, that it, it is kind of satisfying that when I only uh, break out a ball or two and then I manage to solve the rack, it's very satisfying. Down a bit and try the same thing with the top spin. Soft break. Let's see what happens.
Well, the idea was to come up and down the table for, for position. That didn't, that didn't work. If I'd have just floated that ball in, which I clearly could have done, I wouldn't have had a break angle on the 10 ball, like, at all. Okay. So, enough of the, enough of the soft break. So usually when you watch me play, you should be wondering what uh, my break ball is going to be, what my key ball is going to be for the break ball, etc., etc. The way if you decide to ever pick uh, pick this up and try to do high runs like I'm doing, at least have a pretty good idea how to uh, break down the rack. Four ball. Oh, come on. Like I said, just missing shots are, is, is no excuse. Some days I'm on and some days I'm off. I 
should not be missed. How many times have I missed a shot like that now? Starting at the bottom of the rack, back cutting a ball into the corner pocket, and I end up overcutting the ball. I think I've done that a lot tonight. So that, that shot has been my that shot has been my kryptonite. shot I was trying to get positioned on the three ball and I, and I fell short and this is what's most frustrating to me with my own expectations of how many times I've not gotten out of I don't I wasn't even counting how many balls I've made how many times I uh, didn't get out of the first rack based, based on my own expectations? And this is what's really frustrating.
And that's usually the pace that I try to that I try to play at, so I'm just not constantly overthinking what I should be doing. But then when, when things aren't coming together, then I start to slow down, and then I start to gradually speed back up. Shot? Not really. my own fault. Don't want to happen when you when you draw into the rack. That's the last thing you want to happen. Ah. Oh. Oh. Sorry. 
phosphate protein. Close, and I had a shot. So imagine how much harder I have to hit that ball, that break, that break ball, in order to get the cue ball off of the rack. Like I really got to put some power into it. So I only made one ball. That's twenty nine. Oh. I think I'm I think I'm done. I'll give y'all a couple more attempts. I think I've already hit my hundred. I'll give y'all a couple more attempts. I did that for I did that for a very specific reason. And that was that was basically it. Now what? Oh, 
And I don't, I don't think there was any way that I was going to be able to hit that shot and be able to be able to hold position for the 15 ball and keep the seven as a break ball. That was a 12. I'm going to do one more and then call it a night. Try to make it a good one. I've been trying to make all of them good, good, good ones. Just hasn't hasn't been my night. And that was not the smartest decision in the world. I thought I was going to roll forward enough. And I didn't. I'm going to.
nice little recovery shot on I think on that that was the 14 ball. Seriously, too? Just had to do that to me? Good bump on that ball would have been great. Not a glance. Okay, wow, I survived that one. Okay. 
Apparently that was only 28. Felt like I was on, felt like I was on rack three there for a minute. I mean, rack four. Nine ball still. Should have hit that one harder. See what I mean? Come on! So that was what? Two, four, six, seven, plus eight. Ah! Oh, how in the world do I miss that last ball? Welcome to pool. That's how. Oh my goodness. That's just rough. What are you looking at? Cat's just mean mugging me. Ah, all right. Well, doggone it. Overall, I guess still not bad. I may, I still maintained my um my plus ten um average. Zelda. Oh, never mind. He's not even paying attention. I maintained my plus 10 average um, with it with an 11. We had 38 uh, total attempts. You can see 26 times I did not get out of the first rack. That is just brutal. Eight, eight times I got out of the, uh, or I got to the second rack. Th uh, three times I got to the third rack. And then there's still, there was only that one attempt uh, where I got to the um, fourth rack. So yeah, that's pretty much going to be it for the night. It was funny how like the moment I sat down, I saw that I had, 70 plus players and then uh then the moment i, I think i said that the uh the stream is ending like 20 or 30 of y'all uh dropped um immediately uh let's see uh, uh, justin s you're wanting to know what type of glove um i'm using um i i don't have the logo um up anymore but i just recently acquired a sponsorship from uh town billiards and so I'm using uh, their glove now. I used I used to have a Predator glove. Uh, there's really no. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you like this glove is is better than than Predator. I, I really don't feel too much of a difference. 
uh, between the uh, between the the gloves. I think the materials are um, about this uh, close to being similar. Um, but what I can say though is I don't know if you're going to be able to tell. Yeah, but can you see how you can see through um, the glove here? This, at least here on the bottom, it'll. I don't know how to describe it, but it, it appears to allow for better air circulation. So my hand stays, my hand stays relatively cool, um, even even though it's um, even though it's uh, in, inside of a glove. So I, I really don't feel like any type of sweat um, or anything. And I and I honestly don't remember if it was like that with the the Predator glove. And so yes, Eve's it 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 pretty much allows it it the, it breathes more. There, there's more air circulation. Um, with with the uh, with this type of glove, I it, I'm not gonna sit there and say that the Predator glove doesn't do that. I just honestly don't remember my hand being as cool uh, when I'm using this glove versus when I was using the Predator glove. I mean, to me, they they they're both just as comfortable. Um, they obviously both keep the the cue nice and smooth, um, and, and, and everything else. So uh, it doesn't really doesn't really affect anything um, as as far as as far as I can tell. Uh, okay, I'll have to try to remember this one, uh, Duggar, uh, when because I'll, I'll end up going and and watching uh, the 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 whole entire live stream again because I usually timestamp uh, the live stream at least on YouTube because it allows that to happen so that way people can just jump around the stream rather than watching it uh, from beginning to end. So I'll be able to hopefully see what you're talking about uh, for stuff like that. So we'll see, we'll see. Do appreciate you you being here though, but it's been a long time. We need to try to catch up sometime. <clears throat> okay, so a couple of last minute plugs. Um, if you haven't checked the um, pinned comment, that's both on Facebook and or on YouTube, depending upon where you're watching me from. Um, I do currently have a giveaway going on where I'm giving away two J Flower um, Power Jump cues. Um, to be an eligible winner uh, of one of those cues, you have to watch the product review video that you'll find in the pinned comment. Follow the instructions that you'll see at the end of the video, which is give the video a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment on the video, make sure that you're subscribed to my YouTube channel if you haven't already subscribed, and then make sure that your subscription list is public. Because in a couple of more weeks, I'm gonna go live again like this and randomly select two comments from that product review video. And as long as I can verify that they're one of my subscribers, then they'll be the lucky winner of the Jflower Q. Now, the same person is not going to win two Qs. I will make sure that two unique individuals uh, get selected uh, for the winner. And then if you also check my Facebook page, Lil Chris Pool Player, you'll find a post where I'm giving away three packages of town products. One of them being a, a V10, uh, the, the green V10 chalk, a leather pouch to carry the chalk uh, in while you're playing, um, a town glove, whether it's, um, medium, large, or extra large, and it's only for the left hand. I don't have any right hand gloves uh, at the moment. And um, you'll get a V10 sticker along with a V10 batch, and then your choice of a either a Town Fusion tip, which I can show y'all what they look like. Uh, I have them here. There's also there's also a picture of them, but the the tips are the smallest item in the picture, so it's a little difficult to see. So this will be this will be a little better. Come on, I just cut my nails too. It's a little hard to open these things. This is there we go. Okay. So. You'll either, like I said, when it comes to the glove, you have to let me know like what's your what's your glove size. So for example, I fit that glove that I wear is a size large. Um, I have to like I don't know what the measurements of my hands are, but I'm I'm a small guy. I'm five foot five. Uh, but this is the Town Fusion tip here. I'm eventually going to put this on my Icon Four Five uh, to test it out because I don't know if I'm going to put it on my Black Four Five which currently has the how soft tip um, that I changed. I just, you know, recently changed within the past couple of months. This fusion tip really intrigues me because according to their website, the center of the tip is supposed to be more like of a medium type hardness, but everything else around the tip is supposed to be softer. So I, I, I don't know how that's going to feel, but it makes me very curious. 
So you'll have an option to choose this or the Town Pro Medium uh, tip. The thing that's, that's cool about these tips is you can see that yellow line there, that pretty much is your warning that you're getting too close uh, to running out. And so you pretty much might wanna change your tip uh, when, when you get to there. You only get one of these uh, if, you're, if you're the winner of that one, there, uh, of that giveaway that I have going on. And to be an eligible winner on, uh, on uh, that giveaway, you just have to, that one's strictly just for Facebook. And so uh, when I go live to pick the winners on that one, which will probably be sometime next week, like I'm not gonna let that one sit for a while. The, the product review video, I'm letting that one sit for a while, but ne next, sometime next week is probably when I'm gonna choose the winner of the, of the three talent packages. All you have to do is follow my uh, little Chris uh, pool player page. Like I don't even require you to uh, to be subscribed to me on uh, YouTube because this is strictly just for Facebook. But follow the little Chris pool player page, um, like the um, like the post uh, when you find it, share the post, um, and then um, leave a comment um, if you've ever used any of the town products and what do you like uh, best about them. Everybody that that has commented. Or not everybody, but the majority of the people that have commented all praise the chalk, which I use. I, I currently use the the pyros because I'm trying to use all those up, um, and then I'll eventually switch to the uh, to the V10 uh, chalks. But that giveaway is going to be done the same exact way. I'm going to randomly select uh, three comments um, off of that post, and I'm currently seeing that on Facebook, I can't verify that you're a follower. Um, I, I I look at my follower list. That, that, that it shows me kind of like how when you look at your friends lists, but when I look at my follower list, I know that there, that there are individuals that are following me, but if I look for them, they don't show up in the list. And I'm more than certain it has something to do with how Facebook has redesigned the way pages look. Because if I switch to the classic view, I'm able to, I'm able to find people that I can't find in the redesign of the of the of the of the page view because remember pages and profiles are not are not the same thing. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do as far as that one. I'm I'm probably just going to have to give everybody the benefit of the doubt um, that you know if they if they're the winner that they they end up following uh, my page or something like that. But like I said, that giveaway will most likely be announced uh, sometime next week af af after the weekend. And for the J Flowers Power Jump Cues, I've got a couple more weeks left that I'm going to let that video sit and you know gather up views and stuff because I'm trying to collect some ad revenue because I am monetized um, on YouTube uh, to basically cover the cost of what it's going to take for me to ship the cues. Um, obviously, cover the cost of the cues themselves, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And considering that um, the the cues or that 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 video like has less than five thousand views, um, I'm taking a I'm taking a pretty good loss. Um, on uh, on that one there, and that's not a big deal, which is why my last giveaway was quite some time ago. So what I've gathered in ad revenue over the past couple of months covers the cost of these. I'm not expecting the video itself to cover the cost of the cues. Just from me being monetized on YouTube has helped cover the cost of being of of me being able to do these giveaways, which is why I do the giveaways, especially when I do product review uh, giveaways. This is all um, in part of me eventually trying to reach 100,000 subscribers because uh, that's when I'm going to do like a nice, you know, really grand uh, giveaway uh, when I do that, like multiple, multiple items uh, that could be won. So, yeah. So, like I said, check out the, the pinned comment for the, uh, the, the product view of the J Flowers uh, Power Jump queue, and then go to my little Chris Pool Player Facebook page and find the post uh, that's on there for the, um, the town giveaway and just follow the instructions uh, that are on there and you could be an eligible winner. Like I said, all I'm doing is borrowing your time and you're getting hundreds of dollars worth of products for free. Or you you could, you could get hundreds of dollars worth of products for free just for giving me, at least for the product review video, you know, 10 or 11 minutes of your time. And then for the Facebook post, a couple of minutes to just read the post and follow the instructions. I think I think you're getting the better end. You're getting the better end of the deal, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not entirely sure. But at any rate, um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and call it a night. Um, like I said, I'm I'm more than likely gonna at least uh, go live again. Uh, I think this coming Sunday uh, to review two more of my uh, APA um, eight ball matches uh, that I have. Uh, in the meantime, I mean, I'm still gonna be working on my straight pull. You know. On a day on a day to day basis, and when I come in here and practice, 
Um, I just turn the cameras on and record. And if I happen to put up a, uh, put up a good score, then I'll post it uh, on my channel. But sooner or later, hopefully I'll either break my record here on a live stream or let alone I'll score 100 points on a live stream. I think that would, I think that would just be great. So for everybody here that's watching on YouTube or on Facebook, thank you so much for being here. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe, whether you're on Facebook or on YouTube. Have a good night, everybody.